Bruce, the Brizzy Bus. The sun had just risen when Bruce the Bus opened his headlights and looked around his new home at Eagle Farm Bus Depot. He was very excited as today was his first day working for Brisbane City Council. Bruce introduced himself to Billy and Becca Bus and told them that he was a new style Optimus bus and had been built in the Volgan factory down the road. Bruce had just finished his story when he heard a noise and turned his headlights to see some drivers walking across the depot. Bruce's driver for the day was a friendly lady named Betty who greeted him with a cheery, hello Bruce, before climbing on board. We've got an exciting day ahead of us, Bruce, Betty said. First, we get to enjoy a lovely drive along the river on the Kingsford Smith Drive, followed by a trip over the Eleanor Chanel Bridge to the University of Queensland. After that, we're driving up to the Mount Cutha Lookout before we stop for lunch. We then have to pick up a group of school kids from the Museum of Brisbane before heading back into the city to help get all the busy workers home to their families. Betty did a quick check to make sure Bruce was ready for his first day on the road. She adjusted his mirrors and destination signs to show their passengers where the bus was going. When his engine burst into life, Bruce was so excited he sang to himself, Vroom, vroom, beep, beep, happy as can be. I'm Bruce the Busy Bus, you can rely on me. When I reach your bus stop, come on board you'll see. I'll provide you with great service, it's my priority. As they headed out the depot gates, Billy and Becca Bus wished Bruce good luck and looked forward to hearing all about his day when he returned to the depot. Following the morning traffic along Kingsford Smith Drive, it wasn't long before Bruce spotted his first customer. It was a mother with a baby and pram. Betty pulled up at the bus stop and folded out the ramp so the mother could wheel the pram onto the bus without waking her sleeping baby. Good morning, Betty said as the lady boarded and swiped her go-kart on the ticket machine. Betty waited for the lady to park the pram and take a seat before driving off. After dropping the mother and her baby off in the city and picking up some more passengers, Bruce and Betty drove to the Eleanor Chanel Bridge, which would take them to the University of Queensland. Bruce blinked his headlights as he noticed Becca driving the other way and continued over the bridge until he reached the University bus stop. Betty smiled and said, have a good day to her customers as they stepped off the bus. Before heading up to Mount Cutha, Betty and Bruce stopped in the city and picked up a group of tourists who wanted to see the best view of Brisbane. Betty offered to take the tourists to Mount Cutha Lookout where they could get some great photos of the city and buy a drink or snack at the cafe. Welcome to the best view of our great city, Betty said when they reached the lookout. Unfortunately, Bruce and Betty could only stop for a minute before heading to Tawong Depot so Betty could have a lunch and Bruce could get a top up of fuel. Betty returned to Bruce and said, Well, Bruce, looks like we'll have to drive past Suncorp Stadium and across the go-between bridge to get back to the city as there's been an accident on Coronation Drive. Bruce loved watching football games at Suncorp Stadium and so flashed his indicators in delight. As they passed the stadium and the statues of Wally Lewis and Darren Lockyer, Betty tooted Bruce's horn and shouted, Well done, boys! Happy to be driving across the go-between bridge and missing all of the cars on Coronation Drive, Bruce sang to himself, Round and round, up and down, through the streets of your town. Every day I make my way through the streets of your town. As Bruce pulled up at the bus stop outside City Hall, he could hear the school kids laughing and chatting about some of the interesting things they had seen at the Museum of Brisbane. 
Bruce and Betty dropped the kids back at school and headed back to the city to collect a full load of city workers, making their way home after a busy day at work. The trip took Bruce through Hawthorne and Balimba, where he got to see some of the lovely old wooden houses that he'd heard were especially designed for the hot Queensland weather. Bruce could not believe how many times he heard his next stop bring bell ring. Each time, Betty pulled him gently up to the bus stop and said a friendly good afternoon to the passengers as they stepped off the bus. After almost an hour, Betty pulled Bruce up to the last stop. As the final passengers left the bus and Betty checked for any items left behind, she said, well, that's it for the day, Bruce. It's time to head back to the depot. As they pulled into the depot and found a place to park, Bruce was pleased to see his friends Billy and Becca park next to him. As she grabbed her bag and turned to leave, Betty said, thank you for a lovely day, Bruce. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the sights of our city and helping our passengers get to where they needed to go. Bruce smiled to himself, knowing he'd done a good job and could not wait to do it all again tomorrow. Bruce told Billy and Becca about the many places he'd visited and the different people he had helped during the day. He had just finished his story when Ben, the bus assistant, arrived to take Bruce through the bus wash. Bruce giggled as the water sprayed all over him and the soapy bubbles tickled his cheeks. After Ben returned Bruce to his parking spot, Bruce closed his headlights and dreamed about some of the other adventures he might have in the years ahead.